How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to U.S. Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. She is here. As you can tell, this is my new boat. A Super 18 Ginu. Um, this video, I wanted to just kind of walk you through the whole boat, top to bottom. Uh, we do have a build video coming out, but that's taking me longer to edit, so you'll probably see that after the fact. Uh, but I did want to release a video, show you guys top to bottom, the what, where, why, how. Um, long story short, if you're new to the channel, I had a 16 Super Ginu that I've had for 12 years. I built it in Central Florida, more for more towards uh, flats fishing, reds and trout, Mosquito Lagoon area. I moved down to the Keys 10 years ago. I brought that boat with me, and I've made do uh, up until now. Um, we just do a lot of different activities down here, so I wanted to re completely redesign a boat uh, outfitted for Key West, where I live now. And uh, this is what I came up with. It's been years in the making up here. Um, it took us about start to finish, I think probably two months total to complete. Uh, so here she is, Super 18 Ginu. Um, and before we dive in real quick, I just have to thank Sam Gein at Gein Manufacturing for everything. Um, essentially, I went in there with an idea in my head and I just vomited all those ideas onto him and he turned it into real life. Um, and all the guys at the shop, um, Dane, Brandon, uh, and Hunter as well. Huge thanks to everyone involved. Um, also Mercury, Mercury Marine, Simrad, and uh, Blue Point Fabrication in Titusville. Um, just amazing companies that, is, that have helped me throughout this and this boat would not be possible without them. So thank you everybody. So first off, let's get started with the color. Um, my, my last Ginu was actually the color of that cup. It was sea foam. And I really like those tropical blues and greens. Um, but they're they're kind of, they can be kind of loud. So me and Madeline actually poured over colors for hours and hours trying to figure out what exactly we wanted. And we still wanted that islandy blue green color, but we wanted it to be a little more subtle and not stand out as much. And this is what we came up with. It kind of has that uh, teal turquoise look, maybe a little bit of mangrove green in it. Um, thrilled with the color. Um, cannot believe how well it came out with. Thanks to actually Fiberglass Florida for that. They're the ones that mix this color up for us. Um, and she's a beauty so let's dive in so first thing that probably stands out is obviously we have this front console I don't know that I've ever seen a, another Ginu with it and the reasoning for the front console is down here in Key West we're running across a lot of flats at nighttime we do th something called bully netting uh, during lobster season where you catch lobsters with lights and nets and it's really helpful if you can drive from up front and also uh, we do a lot of diving and out of this little boat if you have the console in the center, the amount of dive gear and everything, it gets a little bit of a cluster. So I figured if I'm up front driving, dive gear can be here. While we're shooting up, one sits here, one sits there. All the dive gear spread out. We're not all up in each other's business. So plenty of room for that. Um, actually, we'll start in here. This is the um, all the wiring and whatnot. So I did all this myself. Um, looks decent, I guess. A fuse box, you know, negative bus, fuses, switch, all that good stuff. I ended up going with, you can see the wiring tucked up in there. Um, I ended up going with one battery. And the reason being, um, I only have two things running off of it. Well, the motor, which has an alternator, is charging the battery. But I have a live well and a bilge pump. No nav lights or any other freshwater pumps, nothing else. So live well, bilge pump, that's it. So I figured I can get away with one battery. Um, but I am going to carry a jump box with me at all times, just in case. So we will hop in. So this took some time to put together because we were trying to fit everything on this tiny little console. I actually ordered this. Um, I believe it was a place. I think it's called Rose Marine. I think they're up in, don't quote me, maybe Gloucester. Um, it's a nine inch. Uh, they put these back on the down east boats, on the tuna boats. And with this being such a small console, I was like, dude, I have to have one of these small wheels. So I found it. Um, I have a 1.7 cubic inch uh, helm and it's still extremely maneuverable, super easy to turn. I'll show you some clips of me running with it. Um, very happy with how that came out. Obviously control box. Um, I do have a safety lanyard. I actually have a Velcro wrist strap coming, but um, the fact that I am driving from the front, I'm always gonna wear that. Uh, ignition and this is a Simrad 7 inch NSS Evo 3S 
Um, big, big thanks to Simrad for uh, being a part of this. I love my Simrads. If you watch any of my videos, all my boats have Simrads on them. Well, I only have two, but still. Um, rod holders. I was torn on putting one on each side. I'm right-handed, so I put them both on one side. Um, and I'll explain why. There's a, um, obviously you saw the, excuse me, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, the, ele the electrical panel is back here. So I used those through bolts to through bolt to starboard. So I figured I'd put them on one side, have the panel there. Um, and I don't mind it because I'm right-handed. I set my rods right there. This is a power pole stake or holder thing. Um, so I can do it that way. I can throw it in there and there's actually another one in the back um, as well. And the reason being, the reason I put two, I was thinking of just putting one, but um, if you do any sort of fishing inshore, especially down here where there's a lot of tide and current and whatnot. Um, if you're trying to stay bow in or stern in, you can anchor on different points and it let the boat swing in different ways. Or if I want to sit broadside, I can put two in uh, and anchor that way. Um, this is from uh, Blue Point Fabrication in Titusville. I pretty much took the boat over there. I was like, hey, I need to get this console here at this height. And they came up with this in a day. I could not believe it. They did such a good job. It's beautiful. It's actually bolted into the boat. These 18 supers have a little bow flare up here. It's a it's actually part of the boat, so we were able to through bolt it in there. So that thing is extremely secure. It is not going anywhere. Uh, and then all my rigging runs through here, down under the deck, and comes out towards the back. Um, you're probably wondering what that is. That's actually from me. So I, I did put my hands on this boat quite a bit. I'm not going to say that I built the entire thing. I did very little compared to what the other guys did. Uh, but I did work at Ginu years years and years ago, so there was a lot of stuff I was able to do, and I actually did the webbing. And while I was spraying the webbing, I bumped into this gel coat, and it was still wet. And uh, they asked me to fix it, and I told them no, and I'll tell you why. It's kind of, it may sound kind of silly or a little corny. This is a memory for me. I don't need a perfect boat. Perfect boats stress me out. I'd like to scratch the thing a couple times, just that way I'm not stressing about it constantly. But um, every time I look at that, that's a memory. I built this boat with my stepdad. I will have that memory for the rest of my life. So every time I look at that little gel coat notch, it'll remind me of this build. And um, I don't know, a little sentimental, kind of corny, but just how I feel about it. So first dry storage. This one will pretty much never open. Um, this is safety gear, hopefully. I've got life jackets, throw cushion, a uh, little toolbox with fuses and whatnot. Uh, this is actually my jump box. Since I am running a single battery, I have to like to have that in there. Some ropes and um, extra ball. Um, nav lights, these are actually, so I didn't wire nav lights in the boat. These are actually removable and LED. They, they snap into GoPro mounts. Well, I added GoPro mounts to them. You can snap into them. Um, so that one hopefully will stay closed for the most part. This is another dry storage for whatever else you would like. And then we got this big giant open area. So it looks kind of weird, almost like a trap boat. So again, we do a lot of different activities down here. Pulling stone crab traps, diving, bully netting. Something else we do is we camp a lot. So we actually made sure that this was long enough that Madeline and myself can lay right here, put our uh, sleeping mats down. We do a lot of camping. We have all kinds of camping gear. Unfortunately, Madeline's not here right now. She's doing some real estate stuff this morning, but... It is long enough that we can lay our camping mats down and we will be able to camp right in the boat. We can park up in the mangroves, tuck up onto a sandbar, whatever. We can sleep right in the boat. I thought that was super cool. And I'm really excited about that. Um, this hatch right here, you're probably wondering what it is. So we do a decent amount of fishing, but I say we probably dive more than we fish. I didn't want to have a dedicated live well taking up space. So I actually made a removable live well. So this is um, a connection kit for a wakeboard um, ballast. They fill up the water tanks on the wakeboard boats. Um, so I don't have the live well in here right now, but it'll set somewhere right here. I'm still figuring out the weight and uh, kind of the drainage and all that, but this is a quick connect. So the other end is on the live well, connects right in there, snap it, and I've got a live well. And I can pull it in and out and it um, doesn't take up a ton of space. So I was pretty proud of that when I came up with that myself. We'll see if it works. All right, uh, two more rod holders, drain. Um, this is Sam's creation right here. They normally don't put coolers this big into the Ginus. I said, Sam, 
I need a cooler big enough to fit a legal black grouper. And he came up with it. He gave me a big one. So it's about 28, I think 30-ish. I didn't measure it exactly, but it's about probably close to 30 inches. So I can fit plenty of fish in there. And it's all spray foamed all the way around. Um, so it'll be plenty, plenty cold. And I can't remember if I said it. There is going to be a build video to this um, start to finish. Uh, I actually went up to Titusville and we... Um, put this boat together and I filmed the majority of the process. I could only only show so much without revealing too many secrets, but I was able to show a lot. So that video, keep an eye out for that video. It'll probably be up in the next week or so. Um, again, another one of these, just that way I can kind of control the boat when we are fishing. Back here. This is a custom gas tank, Blue Point um, fabrication. Built this for me as well. Normally don't have gas tanks this big in them. We got it close. It's probably close to 12 gallons. So super excited about that. Not that I will ever need it, but um, with the economy I'm getting, I'll try and throw, I'm still in the breaking period, but I'll throw up some um, some of the economy numbers. Um, with the economy I'm getting, I'll probably, it's probably, I probably have like a 70, 75 mile range on this boat, which is unbelievable. More than I'd ever need. So big gas tank. I got a Raycor fuel filter. Um, here's my through hole with a high speed pickup. So while I'm running, um, I can open and close that while I'm running. My live well will stay primed. Um, 1100 gallon uh, aerator pump, which is probably way too big. But if it is, you can always close the valve or these are actually interchangeable. So you can always pump less. You can't pump more. So I wanted to go big. Uh, bilge pump with a float switch. Bilge out the back and then that little loose cable is my transducer there. Um, again, went with a hydraulic steering. I really was torn on this. I wanted stick steer. My old boat had stick steer on it. You guys could see how quickly I could turn, which to be honest, this thing is really maneuverable even with the hydraulic. Um, but being that it is a 90, I was a little, I don't know, not not convinced. I didn't, it's not worth the risk. I don't want to put myself at risk or anyone on the boat at risk having a stick steer. They say they're only rated for 70s. So we ended up going with hydraulic. Um, oh, get to the motor. So this is a 90 four stroke Mercury, obviously. Um, some people are gonna look at this and go, why in the world did you put a motor that big on this boat? So if you know anything about me, I really don't care about going fast. I've been on a speedboat one time and it was probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever done. Um, this motor, um, I got a decent deal on it. So it was about, I think it was five, $700 more than the seven, I think it's 70 or 75. So why not bump up for that little amount of money and the motor is going to have to work a lot less and i'm going to get way better uh, fuel economy so that's the reason i have a 90 i'm not a race boat i have no interest in going 70 miles an hour um i put uh a four blade on it 15 pitches is a spitfire xs uh four blade one of their smaller ones um on my bigger boat i have three blades real big fan of the three blades on the big boat on this boat because it is a bigger motor the boat's a little smaller um can get a little squirrely at speed um i wanted to put a four blade on there because in my findings i'm no expert but from the little research i have done and testing four blades grab a lot better they have a lot more traction a little more hole shot and they kind of give you a little stern lift and the fact that i'm going to be running through the shallows i figured four blade was the way to go and so far so good it's running amazing it's it's really grippy I get on it and this thing jumps right up uh, out, of, out of the hole. So very happy with that prop choice. I don't think I'm going to have to change it. <clears throat> I've done a couple of full throttles during the break-in period and I'm hitting 59, 80, right at 6,000. So that's pretty much perfect. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have um, a Simrad 3-in-1 transducer. Wire runs all the way up to that guy. Um, it does have the side scan. I think it may do, don't quote me, I think it may do down scan. My main concern was I wanted side scan. Back here in the back country, there's all kinds of coral heads and stuff. So the fact that I have that side scan and this thing burns no fuel, I can drive around all day and mark all these coral heads that I don't have. So really excited about that. Um, and I'll give you a little side shot here. I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering how the motor sits. I mean, you can see like weight wise, the boat sits great. It doesn't look like it's bow heavy or stern heavy or anything. Um, there's very little boat back here sitting in the water. It's still very, very up out of the water. I'm in probably, I don't know, 
17 inches of water, maybe 16. And I've got probably eight, nine inches under the boat still, maybe even more than that. The boat is way, way up. Um, so by no means, and this, this uh, 90 is the same weight as the, the lower one. I think it's 70 or 75, I can't remember. But that is all I have. That's the Ginu. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in the boat, I'm going to start using it a bunch. I'll be posting more performance numbers and just getting used to the boat and whatnot. Um, and also, if you're new to the channel, we do a lot of fishing, diving, all kinds of stuff down here in Key West. So check out some of the other videos. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank everyone involved. There's too many people to name. Um, Gein Manufacturing, Mercury, Simrad, uh, Blue Point Fabrication. There was someone else. Oh, Fiberglass Florida. Everyone at the Gein shop. My mom, my brothers, my sisters, everyone, my entire family helped on this uh, emotionally. Thanks to, uh, to Madeline for helping me pick out the color. And lots of memories to be made. I'm looking forward to it. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm done rambling. That was a whole lot of talking. More than I care to do this early. I will see you guys in the next one.